go down there, Diane. Let's go down there. You're like their number one favorite guy. Because you won them cash. Hi and welcome to the Tour Report from Secret Golf. I'm Diane Knox and I'm joined by Steve Elkington. Nice t-shirt today. Thank you. Uh, I am... Uh, no, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I was looking at that clubhouse at Sedgefield in Greensboro. Of course, Diane, when I played most of my events in Greensboro, I was at another course, Forest Oaks. Okay. Uh, not too far from this one. Mm -hmm. I haven't quite linked into this show yet. So it's I okay. I, I like it. I mean, we're just, we're flowing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll tell you that this week it's the Wyndham Championship in Greensboro, North Carolina, as you said. And well, this is an exciting week. I'm really pumped for the show today because it's the last regular season event on the PGA Tour before the playoffs start. So we're going to get into that in this kind of pivotal week for so many people a lot of big names as well before the playoffs begin. But last week, Elk, we had the WGC. We had two events and we'll touch on the Barracuda Championship as well. But the WGC, the FedEx St. Jude Invitational in Memphis. And finally, we see Abraham Answer crowned a PGA Tour winner. Yeah, it was great to see. My son and I watched it. We were pulling for Answer the whole way. Um, had that tequila brand on his hat. He gave me a bottle of it uh, not too long back, made him sign it. So now it's more valuable for me. <laughs> um, you know, it was a bit of a disappointment for the leaders. They all seemed to stumble it towards the end of the uh, end of the event. Harris, of course, was he slowed down by Bryson or did Bryson slow himself down where they had a double bogey and a triple bogey on number 11? Then just everything came apart. And it just shows you, Diane, how fickle golf is. I mean, there's... You know, Harris English was just playing superb golf. And then all of a sudden, he just couldn't do anything. And it was there for the taking. Burns had a chance at it. Cam Smith even had a chance at it. Should he have tried to hit the ball on 18 around the trees or should he chipped out and went out of bounds? It cost him a fortune. Um, but it was an exciting event. A great winner, Abraham Answer from Mexico. Great story. He didn't, didn't go to college. He only had a, his dad helped him, you know, develop his game. So all in the end, it was a great, it was a great end to that week. It was great to see, uh, I mean, at the beginning of the day, would you have called that you're going to have Burns answer and Matsuyama in a, a three man playoff? So that was an unexpected plot twist at the end, but man, we saw some ugly golf on the back nine from the final pairing of Harris English and Bryson DeChambeau. You know, it gets a little bit uncomfortable to watch when you see Bryson unravel. And I think it's because right now there's a lot of external circumstances that, and you could hear the fans, <laughs> fans, you know, with the chance of Brooksy and shouting things at him. At one point he waved to the TV cameras and it just seemed, it was so awkward in places to see how he performed on that back nine. We need Tiger Woods back on the tour to calm everything back to the baseline where everyone's focused on one guy and it shows everybody how to act, you know. Um, you know, he's trying hard, Bryson is, and he's trying to do things. He, you know, he missteps, talks about the vaccine, you know, all these things. He just gets all, he gets hammered from all different angles. The guy is trying to play golf. He is kind of a nerd. People should know that. He's, he's not, you know, he's not... Uh, his personality is such he just sort of says things and he and he gets he gets cornered by everyone about every little thing, yelling out four or this or that and the other. Um, no, he's a, he's definitely a character that we need on our tour, but it's becoming very distracting. Yeah, and uh, Harris English kind of alluded to that as well, and to the slow play thing. Um, but, I mean, we saw numerous balls in the water, English with double bogeys on the two par threes on the back nine and... Uh, you know, that he had a, a chance to get it into the playoff with a putt on 18, but came up short. Uh, so anyway, I mean, it's taking nothing away from answer. Yeah, English can, you know, think about what happened to him. And, uh, but, you know, he did hit a wedge and an eight iron into the water on two par threes on the back nine. You can stand there all day and never do that as far as slow play. So things do change when you when they put you on the clock Diane I, I listened to Harris English interview after the after the round he said look I felt like I was running after every shot it is it's it's um 
takes you out of your rhythm. You know, it's like going shopping, Diane, and you're running up and down. You just you, everything's going too fast. You can't find anything. You don't know what you're doing. And all of a sudden, it became very clear that the groups ahead, maybe Cam Smith, you know, Abraham Answer, of course, just absolutely stole it in the second um, playoff hole. Sam Burns looked to me like he was the one that was going to win it when he hit it in there close but he looked like he hit that putt too hard, but it's all good. <laughs> I mean, final day pressure. We talk about it all the time. You know it better than anyone. And as regular watchers of PGA Tour events, you see it. It happens time and time again. But anyway, we are onto the final event before the playoffs, the Wyndham Championship at Sedgefield Country Club. Elk, you know this course really well. So we'll talk about the course. Um, Jim Herman won last year and what I find amazing is he had to birdie his last four holes on Friday just to make the cut which he did he ended up shooting a 61 on the Friday and he won at 21 under par on the Sunday the year before it was secret golf contributor JT Poston who won bogey free over four rounds which is just an incredible feat and you know we've got a lot of names that we're going to talk about this week who are guys that can come almost out of nowhere, outside the 125, and this could be a life-changing week. Yeah, there's some things this week that we know, and there's some things we don't know. The things we do know is this golf course, Sedgefield's an old-style course. We know, as you said, JT Poston played the whole tournament without a bogey. Hadn't happened since Trevino in the 70s. We know the score is going to be probably 20 under par. You know, we know that the scoring is going to be good. Some of the things we don't know, Diane, is we've got guys, really, really top players that are playing this event that are outside of their getting their card for next year. We've got Justin Rose, the U.S. Open champion, Tommy Fleetwood, one of the great players from Europe, Francisco Molinari, Adam Scott, Ricky Fowler. All of them are under the most pressure they could ever be. They haven't been under this much pressure since they were rookies. If they don't, if they don't get their if they don't finish in the top 125, Diane, they will play next year, but they won't be getting in all the events that they want to. So there's a lot of pressure on them. So here's what I know. I'm taking all my picks this week to guys that are red hot. There was guys that came off the Barracuda Championship last week, Diane, that are shooting five, six under, hitting 85% of their greens. We've got Matsuyama. He's playing great. All these guys. So I am stacking my board or our board, Diane, with guys that are already on fire. Okay, so the 125 after this week, we'll go through to the Northern Trust, which is the first of three playoff events. And, you know, I mentioned Jim Herman there. He entered last year, entered the week at 192nd, and that win got him up to 54th. So there you have someone who hadn't had a great season at all, was almost, I mean, everyone had ruled him out of the playoffs pretty much until he goes and wins in spectacular fashion and makes a jump up to 54th. So it can be a bit of a fairy tale story this week, but then it also can be a miserable time for many guys. And as you said, we have such big names who are there or thereabouts. We call them, you know, on the bubble. Looking at 125 right now, we have Bo Hogue and at 126, Scott Piercy. There's going to be so much volatility and movement that, of course, we're going to have to track over the four days. Yeah, and we're interested in finding out the people that are hot and who's who's likely to win this tournament. You know, who's at the top of the board and why are they there? You know, I think of players, Diane, all these guys that we're going to talk about, they don't care that Ricky Fowler and them, they're down there. They want them to stay there. They, they've been taking millions and millions out of their pockets for years. They want to keep them there. So we know that JT Poston played this tournament without a bogey. What did he do well? Well, he's one of the best putters on the PGA Tour. He dry, when he drives the ball in fairway, then he can hit these little greens that are, this is an old style course with drop offs everywhere. So you can't just drive it anywhere. So we're looking at stats very carefully, Diane, to see who's actually has a hot putter, who's driving it straight within the last couple of weeks. Cause I think those are guys, some of these other guys are gonna be nervous, Diane, because they're worried about their livelihood. I'm looking for guys that are just running out there, can't wait for Thursday to come where they can tee off. 
Okay. Right, so coming up next on the show, we're going to talk a little bit about Sedgefield Country Club, what the guys are going to have to do to play well around this course. Then we're going to dive into our re-ranking. We have a re-ranked top 10. We'll give you some sizzlers and then those dark horse picks a little bit later on. It's all coming up on the Tour Report. Compete against your friends on PGA Tour events. Win cash and bragging rights. Test your golf knowledge. Experience the success and failure of PGA oh, Tour players. Man. SG Tour App is an engaging golf experience designed by professional golfers that created a variety of games, including single and multi-day games, as well as tournament long contests. It's really simple. Join or create a game, pick four players, and win cash. You can even immerse yourself in interactive features, including course strategy, putt predictor, and daily content exclusively from PGA Tour players. The word is out, and golf fans are catching on. So don't miss out. Download the SG Tour app now. It's the Tour Report from Secret Golf for the Wyndham Championship this week on the PGA Tour, the final event before the playoffs begin. We're talking about Sedgefield Country Club. It's a Donald Ross design, par 70, like last week at TBC Southwind. Length is not going to be a massive advantage to the guys, but accuracy is going to be key. Yeah, there's two really hard holes in this course, number 11 and number 18, both these holes at Sedgefield, I just, I just didn't, didn't even worry about the front nine. I just, I just blew right past the front nine. There's no hard holes on the front nine. Um, number eleven is a, a hole you drive and you hit your ball over a hill. You don't see where it goes. It goes right down the bottom. Exactly the same on eighteen. You hit your drive over a hill. You don't know where it is, and then you've got to hit up to a green. Both those two holes are, are difficult holes. But you know, Sedgefield is a classic course. The way to play good on it is to get your ball in play because when Donald Ross has these little corners of the greens that ask you to get into that corner or underneath this swale that where you can make putts and we've saw it with JT Post and I'm going to use him as a model. Another guy that plays good here, Webb Simpson, he's going to show up on our list. They just plot it down the middle, play these angles on the greens and then let the putter do the work. Yeah. Uh, driving accuracy around here is around 65%. Around 75% for greens in regulation is the average. So, I mean, that's pretty high. It, greens are relatively easy to hit, but it's the those Donald Ross tricky greens, as you alluded to there, they're the problem. And it's one of the top 10 toughest courses to putt on on the PGA Tour. So that means we're really going to be looking at the guys that are hot with the flat stick right now. It's easy course to putt on if you're in the, the corners where the pins are. Almost impossible if you get away from the pins, you're up over these swales. So that's why driving is important. People say, well, it might be irons. No, it's driving because if you can get the ball in fairway, then you can put some spin on it and get it into these little corners. Yeah, and you talk about JT Poston going bogey-free. 2018, Brant Snedeker shot a 59 at this course in the opening round. And, well, this week, you know, bearing in mind it is the last event before the playoffs, we have 37 of the top 100 in the world playing. So, you know, not a lot, which shows you that there's a lot of guys that are really going to be looking to make their move this week. Nobody stays the same on the tour, Diane. Wherever your position is on the tour, you are not stagnant. You are moving up or you're moving down. And that is the nature of the tour. There's guys like Pat Perez, who's not playing this week, fought like crazy to get his ticket. I think he's at 107th. He's safe. He actually has confidence, Diane, at 107th. He'll probably come back in a few weeks and play great. Then you have other guys that haven't played long, good in a long time. Someone like Adam Scott, someone like Justin Rose. They're not confident and they've got to plod their way around and try to find some form and figure out how they can get back into the tour. 
Well, you talk about Adam Scott, he's 121st on the list right now. He needs a top 25 this week to advance to the playoffs. Ricky Fowler is at 130. He needs a top 15 this week to make it. Or saying advance to the playoffs, but really in, in well, yeah. reality, it's actually advance to next year yeah. because this is it. After this event, it's, it's locked in. Only the guys that finish in the 125 go on to make more money in the playoffs. Yeah. But when the year starts next year or in a month or two, all of those guys outside of the 125 will not be getting in the tournament as they want to. And then you talked about Tommy Fleetwood and Justin Rose. They'll need a top 10 and Molinari needs a top five. So that just gives you a little bit of perspective as to where these guys are and, uh, and what they're playing for. And those three big names, Fleetwood, Rose, Molinari, Diane, they're supposed to be your horses in the Ryder Cup. Well, Where, what are you, what is going on over there? Alarm bells ringing, let me tell you that. Let's hope that these other guys have a bit of Ryder Cup juice <laughs> cursing through their veins this week. Right, we are going to get on to our re-ranked top 10. And it comes as no surprise that the guy at number one is Hideki Matsuyama. It's really great to see him playing this week. Of course, Masters champion. And he just lost in a playoff to answer at the WGC. I thought his putt on the first playoff hole was going in. Yeah, I was surprised that that went back to the right. Yeah, we talked about this in our pre-show last week and I and we were talking about, well, is Matsuyama tired from doing all the Japanese stuff and trying to win a medal? And I said, no, I think someone just went and cut the rope and now he's free. He won the Masters, he did all that press in Japan, he was locked up in, with COVID and all this, then he had COVID or whatever. Now he's sort of over his obligations, if you will, comes straight over to Memphis, finishes almost, wins the tournament, and I think Matsuyama is getting ready to go on a hot streak. Wouldn't be surprised if he'll contend for the FedEx Cup. And uh, You know, he's that kind of player. He's a very, uh, very conservative man, hits the ball very straight. Once he gets going, you know, we know the confidence is just below the surface. Won the Masters, almost won got a, a medal last week. Building, building, building. And you can't help but root for him. He's showing a little bit more happy emotion on the course these days as well. You can tell he's got that great relationship with his caddy and it's good to see that. I'd be ecstatic every day if I had <laughs> I was about to say that. He's definitely got reason to be happy. Okay then, coming in at number two is my favourite. And um, again, I love the fact that he's playing this week. Louis Oosthuizen is at number two. And... It's still crazy to me that he's never won on US soil. He's a former Open champion. We can talk about all the runner-up finishes that he's had. And you said last week on the show, do you think Louis is going to win in America before the end of the year? And I said, yes, <laughs> yes. Finished 17th at the WGC. This could be the week. Well, what I like about this pick, Diane, I'm going I'm to call this your pick at number two, is, <laughs> is Louis going for it? He's not being disrupted by any negativity around all these second place finishes. In fact, I think he's doing the opposite. He's he's using it to drive him. And of course, we know how well he swings it. We know how straight he hits the ball. He's a great putter. And look, would anyone be shocked if Louis Oosthuizen just blitzed this field and shot 2,500 and won by seven? It could happen. So we have to put him somewhere. And I think he rightly deserves to be at number two. Mm -hmm. Me too. Well, you know that already. So he is our second place pick. Coming in at number three is a guy who just loves golf in North Carolina. I mean, it goes hand in hand. This tournament has uh, paid him a lot of money over the years. He finished third last year, uh, second the year before, second the year before that, and third the year before that. We're talking about Webb Simpson, who Elk has been kind of quiet of late. You know, bearing in mind his last two finishes are 15th and 19th, it, he just seems to be missing from the equation right now, but he's definitely part of the conversation every time he tees it up at the Wyndham. Yeah, there's something about, you know, playing in your own part of the country. You know, we see Californians play good out west. Max Homer won in LA. We saw Marco Mira win five or six Pebble Beach events. Tiger always plays out west. And when we start to get down into North Carolina, Diane, in the 
as the football season is approaching and the leaves are starting to get a tint of color in them, there's guys that just thrive on that. And Webb Simpson, let's face it, the guy is a medium range hitter. It's that nice power draw out there, knows his course very well. No way he doesn't play good again because he's been sitting rested. He knows he's got his cat, he knows his course. Everything points to Webb Simpson always doing good at Greensboro. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, his stats right now, he's second on the whole tour for scrambling, 15th for birdie average, 19th in accuracy. I mean, that comes as absolutely no surprise. So his, his game's in a good shape. Yeah, and you know, Webb, look, he's 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 not the uh, he's not a Louis Oosthuizen swing. He has a sort of a helicopter finish, but he knows how to play golf. He knows how to play strategy, and he's not a power player. This course has a lot of little hills, over hills to get yourself in position. A lot of dog legs. Webb's not concerned about smashing it across the corner. He's just going to play his hybrid or three wood out into position and just play his golf. He knows exactly what to do to do well here. Okay, and no surprise, he's the Vegas favourite this week at 12 to 1. At number four, well, um, a name that it very, it makes us very happy to have him this high up the top 10 because he's one of our favourites. He's a secret golf contributor and he is one of the greatest putters on the PGA Tour. That should bode well around Sedgefield. Patton Kazire is our number four this week. Another guy from this part of the country. Um, we have seen Patton um, shoot some of the lowest Sunday rounds on tour this year. 63 in Texas, 63 in Texas, 63 in Texas, like three of the tournaments, San Antonio, Houston, Fort Worth, all of these tournaments, he gets so hot. And I was texting with him and I said, I think something big's happening to you this year. And he says, I think, I think there is too. So I'm sort of putting my eggs in that basket a little bit, Diane. He's had such blistering rounds this year. He's having a good year. I think, is there a opportunity here for a little steal before, you know, he's sitting nicely on FedEx. He looks good for a couple of them. What would one good week do for Patton? And he doesn't have any pressure on him. And that's what I like about this week for some of these guys. He's sitting at number 53 in the FedEx. So he is in an amazing place because for the playoffs, it's 125, 70, and then the final 30 play in the Tour Championship at Eastlake. He's, uh, it's easy to see why. He's second on the whole PGA Tour in putting average. And then another stat that's gonna be big this week is putts from one putts from 20 to 25 feet. He's second on the whole PGA Tour. He was first last week, and I think Sung JM just pipped him to the post after the WGC. But that speaks volumes. That tells the story of Patton's year. Well, I talk to people all the time about Patton Gazire and they say, well, what kind of player is he? And he's about he's about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, he's a big man. He's not the greatest driver of the ball, but he's literally like Ben Crenshaw when he gets on the green. It's, it's beautiful to watch. And I don't know if everyone appreciates that. We have another player, JT Poston, who won here, as you noted, also just a freak putter. They just they roll the ball so well, and when they get going, it's just easy, so easy to, for them to make a score. Mm -hmm. Okay then, so Patton is our number four. And then coming in at number five is another guy who loves playing golf in this part of the US. He also loves this tournament. Last year finished in a tie for third and you're big on him this week. I am not gonna refer to him as the Georgia Bulldog because that's what everyone does, <laughs> even though I just said it. But Kevin Kisner is our number five. Yeah, it's a perfect course for guys like Kisner lengthwise. He falls into the same category as Webb Simpson. He's not a long hitter, loves to play strategy. Kisner also has, has been known publicly to say, look, every course on tour doesn't suit me, but the ones that do suit me, I know I've got a chance to win on. Well, this one suits him a lot because as I said, medium range. And, and by the way, long hitters don't all, is not always the best medicine on courses. If you're a super long hitter, you've got to cut corners and try to get a ball into the areas where it wasn't exactly designed for. If you're just medium range, it's wider, it's easier to play golf and this works right into their alley. But, you know, Kisner's a great putter and he's a good iron player. And I, you know, I don't think much of him off the tee. He just sort of gets himself in position and plays from there. Yeah. 
He's in a good position at 69 in the FedEx Cup standings as well. So No pressure. Yeah, no pressure in that sense. Right, so our top five, Hideki Matsuyama, Louis Oosthuizen, Webb Simpson, Patton Kazire and Kevin Kisner. No great surprises, Patton a little bit, but we do have some great names to talk about. Some guys that really have to have a good week to make moves and lock down their PGA Tour card for next season. All coming up on the Tour Report. Get in the game on the SG Tour Golf Gaming app and play four ball. It's a classic stroke play competition based on the aggregate scores of four players. Who makes your team? Well, pick four guys, one from each tier based on the current world golf rankings. Want a tip? You need four guys to make the cut. Get in the game on the SG Tour Golf Gaming app, available on iOS in the App Store. This week on the PGA Tour, it's the Wyndham Championship in Greensboro, North Carolina. Sedgefield Country Club, beautiful clubhouse that you can see behind me right now. And we're giving you our re-ranked top 10. So coming in at number six, Elk, we have a guy who his last outing on the PGA Tour, he was a winner. In fact, he's had top 10 finishes in his last three starts with that win coming at the Barbasol just a couple of weeks ago. He beat JT Poston in a playoff and Seamus Power is our number six. As you just noted, you noted why I'm picking him this week, Diane. He's on his way up and yes, he won. I watched him beat uh, JT Poston in the Barbasol uh, and a great win for this young man. He's been His name is popping up a little bit more and more on the tour. Now he's a winner. But I, I, I just think to myself, imagine how good he feels going to this tournament. Imagine how relaxed he is. You know, he's won a tournament. He now can stand beside all these other top players on the putting green and know that he's won on tour. How relaxed he is. You know, things are, the mind is just incredible on the tour. Sometimes you just can't get out of your own way, but the gates are open for this young man and off he goes. Imagine at the start of the season, um, being able to put a little bet on saying who has a higher chance of finishing well he's 73 in the FedEx Cup but who's going to lock down their tour card between Ricky Fowler or Seamus Power I mean and even Ricky's not the best example but if you were to say Justin Rose or Adam Scott and Seamus Power and you look where he is in the standings after an incredible season imagine being Seamus Power on the putting green putting next to Justin Rose and he looks over and he thinks, well, that guy's not even going to be out here next year on tour, the US Open champion, the Olympic medalist. So all these mind games that, that torture us tour players, Diane. But when you have the Mo on your side, it's the most gorgeous feeling in the world is when you have momentum on tour because it just frees you up so much. Yeah, and uh, Power's third in scrambling on the tour this year, 29th in birdie average. So we talk about that win, those two top tens right before that, no surprise at all. Right, our number seven this week is a two-time winner this season on the tour, and he's sitting at number 12 in the FedEx Cup standings. Jason Kokrak, can he make it the treble? Well, he's one of the longest hitters on tour, and I just told you a reason this course doesn't really suit long hitters because you kind of run out of room. But Jason Kokrak won in Vegas, and he won at Colonial, two courses very similar to this one. In fact, in Vegas, I think he I think he was 50th in driving distance that week. He laid up off the tee. He played into the corners of the dog leg where he's supposed to, and he pulled off a win because he's a great putter. Kokrak wants to be on the Ryder Cup team. They pick it in a couple of weeks. He's just outside of it. He needs one decent week. Doesn't have to win it, but if he can get himself into contention, I bet you Steve Strick is going to go, ah, there's the guy I need at Whistling Straits. Yes, we hope so anyway. So Kokrak at seven. Coming in at number eight, well, we said that Louis was my favorite on the list, but this guy is definitely a favorite too, Hank Levioda. Now, the backstory is, if you missed it, I picked him 
um, as a dark horse two weeks in a row and he finished top 10. We had him as one of our sizzlers and he finished in the top 10. And the momentum was good for him at the 3M Open, but his dad took ill and he had to withdraw from the tournament. And um, he said on social media afterwards that he just had to go when he found out that his dad was sick, which was obviously the right decision to make. But he's back in action this week. He's 90th in the FedEx Cup standings and 70 to one, there's value in Hank. <laughs> Again, you know, this top 10 is made up of guys that have, that have, have no pressure on them. They're, they're going for the top 30. They're, you know, established players. Matsuyama, Masters champion, etc. And now on this back end of the top ten, I'm sort of leaving out all these other guys, Diane, that are that are starting from cold starts where they've got to literally try to recreate everything. I'm banking on guys like Hank, who's having a great summer, securities ticket for next year. Again, he's got to be very happy with himself. Everything in his life right now is very smooth and even and what would be better he's already tasted it what three weeks in a row you picked him for top five or something like that he knows what it feels like to be up in the top five he's not intimidated anymore by any of this i think he's going to do well again that would just be excellent um brian harman coming in at number nine another secret golf contributor we know his swing we know his game very well also having a tremendous season sitting at number 32 in the fedex cup standings brian harman has not won for a long time um you kind of forget that because he has been in contention or there or thereabouts a lot lately yeah, I love this guy's game. Harmon, you know, left another hand, left hander like Hank. Um, again, it's this little model that, you know, not every course suits Brian Harmon. He fights hard. Like he was right there in the US Open on a massive course out of Torrey Pines. He was there that when Brooks Kepka won the US Open, beat him in the last group up at Aaron Hills. Uh, massive course. Well, this course is not massive. This is a dog leg, little hilly course that suits that medium range hitter. JT Poston, Webb Simpson, Kevin Kisner, Brian Harmon, great putter. I think he was leading the tour for the last month or two in most putts made, or the most likely to make a 10 footer oh, on tour. I mean, how good would it be to make every 10 footer you ever stood out of? Yeah. Hey, how well, rich would I be? I wouldn't even be on this podcast with you or this, I would be in really? Monte Carlo. Really? sipping on a drink with an umbrella in it, if I may. <laughs> well, we all know that I'm the fan of the drink with the umbrella in it. So. Yeah, you're the fan of the umbrella. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> all right. So, well, it's made Brian Harmon very rich, and that's why he is sitting at number nine in our top 10 this week. And then coming in at number 10, another one of your favorites, and you called it just a couple of weeks ago with Johnny Vegas. Now, looking at his last couple of finishes, where did he finish runner-up where you called it? Uh, he finished runner-up at uh, 3M, 3M, or he was right there at 3M. Okay, was that at the 3M? Everybody, everybody on the CBS started picking him then for the Olympics, but I already had him the week before. But Johnny Vegas lives in Houston, and he's had some injuries, and my friend who's been working on him got all that sorted out. He was a terrible putter a year ago, now he's got that sorted out. He's driving the ball so good, and he's one of the longest hitters, He's won a ton of the tournaments on tour over the years. But now, look, he came out of a terrible category last year, Diane. He was outside of, the, I think, the 150. And where is he sitting right now? 51. 51. 51 on the FedEx. That's millions of dollars for anyone that wanted to know. Played good in the Olympics. And Johnny Vegas is a superstar player. He just, whether it's the injury called the poor game or the poor game, created the injury but he's over all that now and I look for clear sailing for Johnny Vegas. Okay. So our full top 10 this week for the Wyndham Championship. Hideki Matsuyama at one, then we have Louis Oosthuizen, Webb Simpson, Patton Kazire, Kevin Kisner, Seamus Power, Jason Kokrak, Hank Lavioda, Brian Harmon and Johnny Vegas. Right, coming up next, we are going to give you our three sizzlers, guys that really made jumps up our re-ranking. And we'll talk a little about the guys that are around that bubble number of 125 and what they're going to have to do this week. Play Money Grabber on the SG Tour.
Instead of strokes, it's all about the cash. You pick a team of four players, one from each tier, and scoring is based on the money that your team wins. Your guys missed the cut? No problem, you're still in the game. The SG Tour Golf Gaming App, available on iOS in the App Store. Well, we're working our way through our picks this week for the Wyndham Championship on the PGA Tour. We've given you our top 10 and Elk, now we're on to our Sizzlers. Now, th these guys all actually have really good odds this week and they all made big jumps up in our re-ranking for many different reasons. Now, we talk about the fact that 125 is the golden number to make it to playoffs and to lock up your card, your job for the following year. And our first sizzler is sitting at 122. How much pressure is on Ryan Armour to have a good week? A lot of pressure on Ryan Armour. However, the reason that I we are picking him as a sizzler this week, he out of the bunch of guys that are trying to make a move, this is the sniper in the group. He's basically leads the tour in accuracy, mid-range game, perfect setup for him. This is his chance right here. He'll know it. Pressure's on him. He's been playing pretty good golf lately, and I wouldn't be surprised if he has a really good week this week. Well, you talk about playing good golf recently. He has, I mean, coming off a missed cut, but finished sixth at the 3M Open, fifth at the Barbasol the week before. And we know that accuracy is gonna be important this week and third on the whole tour in accuracy. And looking at the kind of estimated mathematical calculations, he is probably aiming for top 25 to guarantee that he's in that 125. Yes, so we talked off air about, I talked to my friends, Pat Perez, what, what is, how many points does he have right now? Because we think it's gonna be about 450 FedEx Cup points will keep your card for next year. Mm -hmm. And he's at what, about 430 or something? He has 434 points. They're predicting roughly 450. Mm -hmm. So what's 17 little FedEx Cup points between friends to get this week, Diane? I think your mathematics is telling you he's got to have a top 25. May or may not happen because we don't know where everyone else is going to be. But I would take a guy that hits at the straightest of anyone that's playing this week as a chance to get those points. Uh, just as a little side note, we talk about the importance of these little points. Um, last year, which was a weird one because of COVID, but my brother Russell finished at 126 <laughs> by one point. So... Yeah. Uh, he was lucky that, you know, that it was a rollover into 2021 because of COVID. But <laughs> we're like, please don't give everyone a fright like that ever again. That was stressful. He's done his work and your brother is safe now. He, he's had a yes. honest year. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's made it. He's not in the same position he was last year. Yeah, 473 points. He's sitting at 113. But, um, you know, we were just talking about Ryan Armour at 434. Adam Scott at 437 points. So he's another one that he has to be thinking at top 25 at least to get that locked in. Yeah, you've got to prepare yourself to play a good week. You can't just say, I'm going to be top 25. You've got to hit your first shot in a fairway, have a strategy of how you're going to play this golf course. There's a lot of layup holes. There's a lot of three woods. You've got to curve the ball. It's very trees and hilly on the front nine. You've got to work your ball into position so you can have a shot at these corner pins. Uh, of course, these guys all know that. It's just whether they can do it. We've seen guys absolutely scorch this course. 59 for Snedeker, 25 under, no bogeys for the week. So we know, we know what's going to happen by the end of the week. Okay, well, so our first sizzler, Ryan Armour, who's 110 to one, same odds as our second sizzler. And uh, this is the one that I was big on this week. We're going with Brian Stewart, 91 in the FedEx Cup standing. So he's safe, that's not an issue, but he's playing great golf. Top 10 at the John Deere, top 10 at the 3M. And we know that accuracy is gonna be important. Second on the whole PGA Tour, he's definitely not one of the longest hitters by any means is one of the shortest but the accuracy is always spot on 
that works perfect right here. We've talked already right at the top of this list with Webb Simpson and the Kisners of the world. Here's another guy that has almost identical game, probably hits it straighter than both those two guys. So we start to think about what is it going to take? We know the scoring. So who, who can do that? Who, you know, who, like if Bryson DeChambeau was playing this course this week, we would, he wouldn't be on our board because he's not going to lay up on every hole. He's going to try to smash it across the corner. Okay, fine. This style of player works on this style of course. This is an old course, hilly, undulating, dog leggy, hitting balls over where you don't see where they land. You have to have a good imagination, get the ball in play. And you were saying earlier, imagine being Brian Harmon and being so high up in the 10 foot putting category, how rich you would be. Well, Brian Stewart is second on the whole PGA Tour in one putts between 10 and 15 feet. That's why he has made over 1.2 million this season. <laughs> yeah, and he realizes that and he knows that that's key. And when you're a good putter on tour, pretty much everyone knows that. And like your friends come and talk to you about, hey, come watch my stroke. Or if I'm if I'm hooking the ball on the range and I've, I've got a friend who's hitting it straight, I say, come over here and see, tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'm not always trying to get their coach involved, but but because you know you have friends on tour that play golf with you all the time, and you know I'd be hitting it terrible, and I'll play with my friend. He goes, when did you change your swing? And I'm like, I didn't change it. And he said, yeah, you did. You've got to do this, and then right away I'm back on it. So. Anyway, I got off track there a fraction, but imagine being, <laughs> being a great putter. Imagine, imagine. Right, our third sizzler. This is someone that you really noticed last week. Finished fourth at the Barracuda. Adam Schenk is 80 to one. So we're picking him as a sizzler. Yeah, and I'm picking him for a reason. When I, the little course that they played out in uh, Reno, Van Ruhan won it at like 50 something points. Well, that translates to like 25 under. Well, this pick, Shank. Shank? Yeah, Shank. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> what a name <laughs> if you're a professional golfer <laughs> of all <Yeah>. the sports. <laughs> he was basically five or six under par himself every day 22, 21, 22, 23 under. Narrow course in Reno. He played really well. You know, I think he was way up there in greens and reg, 80% or so. That's a high number. So I'm banking on him, Diane. Every day he's played for the last four days, he shot five, six under. This course is going to be much the same. He's going to get tons of chances. He's going to get lots of looks. It's not like he's going to a real long, difficult course. This is going to set up to his eye or to the way he's been playing. When you're on tour and you're shooting five or six under every day, I have tour players that text me all the time. They go, hell, what do you do when you're hitting it good, you're putting it good, chipping it good, but you just don't get anything out of it? Yeah. I normally tell them, if I'm hitting it good, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy with myself because it feels good to hit it good. Okay. Well, Shank's hitting it good and he's scoring. He's five, six under every day he's going out on tour. So that's why he's my back end sizzler this week. He, I mean, that finishing fourth at the Barracuda, no fluke, finished fourth at the John Deere Classic not that long ago as well. So some good golf from Schenk, obviously, because he's 95th in the FedEx Cup standings for the season. So our three sizzlers, Ryan Armour, Brian Stewart, and Adam Schenk. Right, Jay's going to be here to do Dark Horses soon, Elk. But before you go, I mean, we're talking, we have done throughout the whole show about big names that are out with the 125. What are you really going to be looking for and looking forward to seeing this week with the Wyndham? Well, there's a lot happening in golf right now. It's very exciting. You know, there's Ryder Cup implications on both teams. The European team, uh, even though they have Ram, who's just crazy hot, but he's kind of, you know, out of, out of you know, we, we don't see him right now because he, he's resting. That's kind of, he's, he's going to be fine. Rory is a little bit, you know, up and down with his game, but the European Tour uh, players are a little bit out of form. That doesn't mean anything because Poulter's there. Now on this team, I'm watching guys like Jason Kokrak, Harris English, I think did enough last week to jump into that side of it. That's going to be exciting to watch. I'm looking at some of these big name players like Rose, Fleetwood, 
Molinari, Adam Scott, all uh, Ricky Fowler, all outside of keeping their cards for next season, Diane. It's going to be very interesting where they're paired, who they're paired with, what kind of score can they put together, can they make a run, are they hitting it good enough? And all these young guys that couldn't care less about any of the stories I just told you about, and they're just going to do a sprint to the championship this week. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. And, well, we'll be talking to you next week to look at the first of the playoff events, the Northern Trust. I was the 1990 champion at Greensboro. Well, I know. I, I thought you would mention it. <laughs> so... I never mention it. I should get my little trophy to go over there. <laughs> Show us the trophy and we'll put it in. The GGO. You want me to get it? Yes. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see if I can turn my... See, see my trophy cabinet right there. Let's see. Oh. So I'll tell you a little story, Diane, about the, this is the GGO, the Greater Greensboro Open. It was my first victory on the PGA Tour. And let me tell you why this was significant. We all know that with the waste management event, hole number 16 in Phoenix is the most famous par three for crowds. Well, it all started at hole 17 at Fairway Oaks in Greensboro. That was the first hole that had the giant crowds on there. And did you know that if you won the GGO the next year, you had your name inscribed on the beer cups that everyone drank out of for the whole tournament week. So, I collected like hundreds of them. Until crazy. How many do you have? <laughs> yeah, you see the guys coming out of Augusta. They got all these, all these uh, empty can, empty cups with Augusta logo. So that's the GGO yeah. trophy. This looks like one of those Fabergé eggs. Do you know those really fancy, expensive eggs? That's what it looks like. Exactly what it is. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Way back. Thank you. <laughs> Saturday is considered moving day and you can play along on the SG Tour. It's a one day stroke play competition where you select a team of four players to shoot the lowest scores of the day. Will you make big moves? Download the SG Tour golf gaming app on iOS now. We are on to the final part of the Tour Report this week for the Wyndham Championship and it's the Dark Horses with Jay Kaplan. I'm just a little bit distracted by the fact that you completely ripped off my Sedgefield Country Club background. <laughs> the difference is mine's actually a sketch that I did while you were recording with Elk. So mine's like a pencil sketch. So hopefully you're impressed by my attention to detail. Wonderful. Right. Well, we're going to dive into our dark horse picks for the Wyndham. Now, as we've talked about, that FedEx Cup number is, is the everything this week. And it's definitely the motivating factor for a lot of our dark horse picks, if not all of them. And you're going to kick off with your guy who's sitting at 131 right on the edge. We've been on this wave of selecting FedEx Cup border dudes, and this is a border dude in two ways, Diane. He is at 131 on the FedEx Cup ranking, and he's Canadian, so he's north of the border. And I like picking these Canadian players. In fact, this guy's been playing very well as of late, and I would like to take credit for him because I nabbed him about five weeks ago as my dark horse. And although he didn't totally perform, I feel like I gave him some good vibes and now he's really paying off for me. So I'm going back to him. I love this guy and I love him at Wyndham. In 2020, he shot an opening round 62. Now, while he did fall by the wayside over the weekend, that tells me he feels very comfortable here and he has a chance. He does come in ranked 76, 76th in birdie average. Not great, not terrible, 96 off the tee, 24 green and reg, but we do have him ranked fifth in form in this very large field. He finished sixth and 16th in his last two. This dude is on the come up. 
It's Roger Sloan. At 100 to 1, Roger has to finish top 15, we estimate with our calculations, to lock up his card for next year and advance to the playoffs. So the pressure is on Sloney and 100 to 1, you just made it into the dark horse, exactly the same as my guy who at 141 in the standings needs a top five finish. However, two years ago, he opened with a 63 and he finished in a tie for sixth. I hope that doesn't happen this year because how gutting would it be for Rory Sabatini, Slovakia's new <laughs> golf advocate, Rory Sabatini. Golf advocate, okay. Yeah. Ambassador. <laughs> Yeah, why not? I mean, silver medal winner. There you go. Rory Sabatini. Yeah, he's a. I actually looked him up on Wikipedia earlier today, and it was like Rory Sabatini, South African, Slovak. <laughs> Diane, he's so unlikable, he can't even find a country. That's how I look at this guy. Say that. Anyway, he <laughs> broke the 18-hole Olympic scoring record in Japan in the final round and got that silver medal. He has great form at this course two years ago with that top 10 finish, as I said, and he has to do something big this week to lock up his card for next year. So Rory Sabatini, who's by the way, 31st in putting average on tour, it's gonna be big this week. He is my dark horse at 100 to one. I'm going to throw some added pressure on him. I feel like the um, underlord of Slovakia will lock him up if he doesn't get his card. So there's probably some extra pressure on his new country. That being said, there's pressure on my guy, Diane, who is a man that's been out on tour for quite some time. He actually has athletics in his blood. His dad was a NFL player back in the late 60s and early 70s. And this is a guy that just seems like he's one of those um, field fillers. Like every week he's down on the list and he fills the field and doesn't really do a whole lot. But as of late, this fellow is playing really well. He's coming off an 11th place finish in his last event. Comes in ranked seventh in form in our field. His numbers aren't gonna wow you, but at 46 years old and 146th on the FedEx Cup, uh, rank. He knows it's time to get it going. He's used to being in this spot year after year where he's trying to hold on to his card. I think this guy is going to make a move this week. He's going to have to have a big week, uh, mind you, to really secure that place. But let's hear it for the one and only Bo Van Pelt. He's had a runner-up finish this year at the Palmetto Championship at Congaree 2. And at 146, he's going to be another one of those guys that will need a top five finish. And he's 225 to one this yeah. week in Vegas, right? Really good. Okay, so Bo Van Pelt is our third dark horse. We have one more guy to add into the mix, and this was courtesy of Elk who threw a guy in and he's 125 to one. So I'm like, that fits our dark That's horse. an improvement. That is an improvement for Elf. He finished second at the Barracuda Championship and his, his numbers are all right. I mean, he's 19th on the whole PGA Tour in scrambling. His FedEx Cup number is 75, so he's completely locked in. But what Elk said was he hit 83% of greens last week at the Barracuda and Elk was saying, you know, for someone to hit 83%, that's like crazy good on the PGA Tour. So he said, hopefully you can take that into this week. And Andrew Putnam at 125 to one is Elk's dark horse one to watch. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because you sound not just reluctant to get behind this guy, but you're downright disgusted that you have to take another person's player and vouch for him. That's that's the tone that you're bringing this week. Not at all, not at all. Right, well, thank you very much for watching our show. I really enjoyed today because I love, love, love the FedEx Cup playoffs and the fact that we've got all these guys who are, you know, flirting with that 125. Oh, Diane, you can feel the excitement as we get close to playoff time. 
And you just seem like you are over the moon about this time of year, and uh, I'm picking up on your vibe, so let's see how it unfolds. Well, just looking at names around the bubble, you've got Matt Kutcher at 124, Bo Hogue at 125, Scott Piercy at 126, Nick Lashley at 127. So these are guys that, you know, that are right there right now and have to move up. We talked about Ricky Fowler, he's at 130, Camilla Vajegas at 129. So you'll see if you're watching the coverage this week on TV that they will give the projected FedEx Cup ranking. So it's moving around all over the place and it's exciting to keep up with before we dive into playoffs with the Northern Trust at Liberty National next week.